All right, so today I'm trying to make a wedding present for my friends. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna make a cutting board with a custom engraving for them because a while ago they stole my cutting board. And uh, so I thought it'd be a perfect gift. That's the cutting board over there. I'll just walk you through this workflow. <clears throat> so I got my test piece over here that I'm gonna do the engraving in first. And then this is the engraving I want to do. So it's going to be two passes. It's going to be first the engraving and then a little pocket to just clean it up a bit. All right, going to put this design on the machine's SD card. What are you making? Making them like a custom cutting board. What's it gonna be like a shape? It's this. Whoa! That's cool. Yeah. Whoa, it's all <laughs> three dimensional. So I'm just doing that. Doing the thing. You got your work cut out for you. You yeah, about to cut out your work. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> that was good, dude. So as you can see, I already did a couple test cuts in the plywood here just to make sure the tool paths are working well. So now I'm getting my actual cutting board to do the real cuts in. This is double-sided woodworking tape. I'm just marking the center of the cutting board here so that I can align my router with the origin that I set in CAD. I don't need this to be super precise for what I'm doing, just as long as it's pretty much in the center. Looks pretty good to me. Mark the sides here. I'm gonna get that V car bit in there. So first things first is zeroing the X and Y axes, and then we're gonna zero the Z to the top of the workpiece. Now I'm gonna select the design that I wanna cut, which is gonna be that first engraving operation. All right, looks good. All right, it's hard to tell from the shot, but the display is telling me to move to the bottom left. Now you can more clearly see that dot on the screen, which is going to tell me where to go. Let's do it. I might have to change the speed settings a bit once I get going. It was jittering around a lot here, so I'm gonna just try to mess with the spindle speed to bring that down a bit. As you can see though, it still has a lot of kickback, and I have to adjust it a couple times to get it right. If you look closely at the display on the machine, you can see there are two essentially loading bars around the perimeter of it. The outer bar shows the progress of your design, but the inner bar actually shows how much drift is accumulated during the movement. You can see here that the inner bar is actually going to the red zone right now, which means I'm going a little over my acceptable drift range. 
It's not optimal, but we'll see how much it impacts our design. actually way better than I thought. Oh wow. Not the best service quality, but I can sort of sand that down and finish it. Okay, now let's do the pocket operation. All right, now I'm gonna grab my eighth inch flat end mill for the second pass. And then we're just gonna do a little pocket operation to clean up those little uh, areas where the v card bit couldn't get to. I have to Z off of an empty spot. Gonna align my router with those lines that I drew earlier. And then select my new design, which will be that second pocket operation. All right, here we go. Too shabby. All right, now to just clean everything up a little bit. a lot better. Got this special mineral oil from Ace today, dual purpose. Let's try it out. That looks pretty good. Not too shabby, I'd say. Ding, pretty clean. <laughs> 